What's up, everybody, and welcome back to PPR Podcast number 179. We are back to review the games for the season. It is the start of the season. It's week one here. As always, I'm Chase Zadoro, but joining us today will be the new co-host of this podcast, Maddie Worley, who's worked on the PPR for the last couple of years. Maddie, just give a little kind of background about yourself because, you know, you've been off camera, really. You've been working inside yes. here. You know, what's kind of been your impact on the, on the PPR so far? Most of my work on the PPR has been here in the studio, I've been producing, doing editing, things like that. So I've gotten the pleasure of seeing pretty much every game that comes through here, which has been really cool and really deepened my knowledge of the San Diego football scene. But I'm excited to sit here and be able to talk about what I see every Friday night. And what made you want to join the PPR just to begin with? Well, I'm a San Diego native, and for as long as I can remember, football has been something I've looked forward to, just going to games when I was little, um, you know, watching the show with my dad every Friday night and later on with my friends in high school. And so once I went to college and kind of thought about what I wanted to do, I realized um, working for the show was a really good opportunity, and I'm very glad I did it. Now, I, I used to say that I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bo when it comes to athleticism, but I cannot do that with Maddie. <laughs> she is the fastest person at Point Loma Nazarene. First sea lion under 12 seconds in the 100-meter dash, breaking the school record. Yes. Congratulations on <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the athleticism gone up, but now I am trailing behind, and I, I don't know what my 100-meter dash record would be. I would assume a hamstring pulled by about 50 meters, so I don't think I'd get time. Yeah, we could try it out. We Let's try not try it out. It out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys came here to, to hear about football, so we'll get talking about football. So let's start off with game of the week. You know, obviously this one is what everyone's been waiting for mm -hmm. is to finally get back into it. Who do we got on, on it for week one? So week one, we've got El Camino visiting Helix. And speaking of waiting, they've really been waiting to see each other since 2022. Huge game, the D1 Championships. Um, Helix fell to El Camino. The final score was 19 to 14. But you know what? Helix is looking to come back. They're always a strong program here in San Diego, and I'm sure they're hoping to, you know, get a little revenge to El Camino and start off their season strong. Um, they're going to be led by sophomores, actually, Pablo Jackson and Lee Norman Lester. So it'll be cool to see a young team try and fill some big roles. And then El Camino, they've got a senior star in Caden Coleman, as well as a quarterback transfer, Gavin Wasserman from San Marcos. But we're seeing a big problem with all these transfers that they might not be able to play until September 26th. So it'll be interesting to see how the season starts out without maybe their number one guy. And yeah, that's honestly the biggest thing is like, I try and go into this week one of like, all right, who's gonna be there? And obviously week one with a high school football, you never know what a team truly can look mm -hmm. like. But with all these transfers, like it's like some of them are ready to go. Some of them are waiting till September 26. Some of them are even longer than that. So, you know, I'm at the point and I think all of us are at the point where it's like, we'll see on Friday night on the first week of PPR. Um, I know about Wasserman coming from San Marcos and going there. That's the thing is like I can't even speculate like would he be the number one mm -hmm. for El Camino or are they just going to give the number one to whoever's going out there week one. Um, but the one thing I think we have to talk about is Isaiah Pablo Jackson going from Granite Hills where he really did accomplish everything. First ever uh, CIF section title when they won. Then they went on to win the state title and then they win the open division <laughs> last year. I mean, it, it, it was shocking to see because you wouldn't think he would leave. But at the mm -hmm. same time, if you're going to leave, you left nothing on the table left to do. I don't know why he went to Helix, uh, but I do know that he's going to get the ball every single time. A lot of sophomores. I went there to their spring game. Mm -hmm. Is the majority of that team is sophomores. Uh, Lee Norman Lesser, one of the best ones. I think he has a chance to be one of the better quarterbacks in this county. Will it be this year? Who knows? Uh, also really like the wide receiver Braylon, Braylon Ross, I believe his name. He was really, really tall, athletic kid who's also a sophomore. So I don't know what I'm going to get out of Helix. But at the same time, El Camino has lost a lot of guys too. There's no more Car Carson Howard. Um, so we'll have to see who the quarterback's there. Obviously, Caden mm -hmm. Coleman is a great player. We know El Camino is going to always be big in the trenches, always a physical team. So I don't, you know, I would love to make predictions. And I think for the majority of this podcast, this is probably one where I don't make predictions because I simply don't know. And I think everybody would understand that being it's week one, but I just don't know what I'm going to get from Helix side of the ball. I know they have Pablo, so they'll probably lean on him a lot. I don't know what I'm going to get from the El Camino side of the ball. Yeah. Game of the week, yeah, because they are historic. <laughs> and this is the first time since the, D, the D1 playoffs where El Camino went in there and upset them. Um, so I think there will be a little bit of revenge, but it's also almost two completely different groups now. 
you know, it's almost the same guys that weren't there aren't there anymore. So it'll be it'll be an interesting one. But, you know, with these two programs, you always can anticipate some pretty good football. I can't wait for it. Yeah, I definitely agree. Two completely different teams. But I think no matter what, we're going to see a great game of the week. Yeah. And then now we go to North County, which arguably could be game of the week as well. <laughs> it was our live game in week one last year where we had Granite right. Hills hosting Mission Hills. It's now the reverse fixture of the game. Now Granite Hills will be going to Mission Hills. There is a lot of returners on this side, but Granite Hills lost a lot of guys on that defense. We're talking about Demarion White, Ford, Moshi Talea, Nikoi Maddox, Jordan Glaze, Haynes, Bertalon, all of them are gone. So now, you know, Parker Vance is there, Giselle Ramirez is there, both great in the secondary um, last year for Granite Hills, but that's really what I need to see is that Granite Hills team really inspired me to believe that they were capable of going to the open division. Um, I didn't, I didn't expect them to still beat Carlsbad or beat Lincoln, but they did it. But it was because of that defense, how much they flew to the ball. Every single hat was on the ball every time I watched them. They were fun to watch. If they can have that same mentality and that same approach, I, I get it's not going to have the same players, but if they can have that approach, they'll still be a viable defense in this county, maybe not to the level of last year. But then you look at Mission Hills. Fresh off his commitment to Penn State, Troy Hune, you know, he has all – the trademark quarterback of like, okay, I can understand why this guy's going to be in a D5 program, going to the Big Ten. I think this is the year where he can take a big step up. He loses his number one receiver, but I still mm -hmm. think he's capable. And obviously, whatever helps a, a good quarterback is a great running back, and that's Giovanni Hart. You know, rush for over a thousand yards. I see the same thing going again. Mission Hills has kind of always had kind of some pretty good running backs over these last couple of years. I think Hart can go toe to toe with them and I think he will have another great season. But same thing on defense. You know, you're talking about replacing the impact of Granite Hills, the impact of Jonathan Class leaving. Yeah. I mean, that was so many sacks. I think it was like 23 <laughs> sacks or something like that last year. I mean, I don't know what it'll be. I know that they, they prepare their guys probably as best as anybody with Mission mm -hmm. Hills. Their coaching staff's great. So uh, that will be a very interesting game, especially I think I think for the Granite Hills perspective, it's like, all right, we came we're coming down off the open division run. We're replacing so many guys. We've seen in the past what that looked like with Cathedral, where they went on to win the mm -hmm. state title and they had to replace like the entirety of their defense. So I think the advantage would be in Mission Hills' hands, but I, I can't, you know, I refuse to count out the Eagles <laughs> until I see it. After what I saw last year, I will never count them out until I see it on the field itself. Yeah, I 100% agree. They're both great programs, and Granite Hills, I think, surprised a lot of people being the open division champs. So it'll be interesting to see if they can keep that hot streak going with a new round of people and how Mission Hills can prep their new defense yeah. without Jonathan Class. Absolutely. And, you know, these first week ones, because of all the transfer stuff, you know, I think it's less with the, when it comes to these two programs. But I do think that you also want to get out to a hot start because these games matter so much now with the new playoff rules and exactly. how much the strength of schedule stuff's going to matter. So it, it's a weird time, but it's, it's not like these games don't matter. We're ready to go here week one. So it definitely will be a big one. Uh, but now we have another big one coming out of the South Bay as well. Yeah, so we got the South Bay. Cathedral is visiting modern day. And speaking of teams with some new looks, honestly, both of them are in a new position as um, the Dons are taking on a lot of kids from Saints. And we saw Saints was dominant last year, another team that I don't think people completely expected to do so well, but they did winning the championship. But a lot of those guys have transferred over to Cathedral. So I think that's, you know, probably exciting for their program, but it's it's a whole new feel, a new team. So it'll be interesting to see how that, you know, plays through. And then modern day, they also have a new coach. Um, we know they have a star in Cartel Purvis, but the question is who else is going to be out there with him being the major playmakers? And I think that's something we're hopefully going to get a taste of in this week one. Absolutely. You know, playing for Cathedral, the one thing you can give John Montali on defense is a great D-line and he will make the rest happen. And with Sidney Dupoy and Luke Westfall, and also they have Bronx Latuli Gasanoa, who seems to be the only one of those Saints kids who will be there week one. Mm -hmm. um, um, I believe I believe the rest of them will have to sit for a couple of weeks. It, he's a monster, Bronx. So having all three of them on that defensive line is going to be a wrecking machine. You know, th but the same, I think they're the one that is like the poster child for, OK, completely different team mm -hmm. once the transfer's over. Because you're talking about Brady Palmer, Parker Johnson, both running backs in honor and Willie Flores. You know, I, I don't know the exact of which one's sitting out for so long, but they, it'll be a completely new look. It's 
But modern, modern day still got a great squad down there as well. The one player who really stood out to me the most was Jeremiah King for them. You know, he played really well in seven on seven whenever I watched them. It's seven on seven, so you know, I take it with a grain of salt, but he looked really good. I wanna see what Cartel Purvis can do. I think he can have another big step up this year. But it's also a new coaching staff. You're talking about no longer having the guy who won you two state titles and back-to-back -back state titles. So now how do we go on to Richard Cook? And what does this new coaching look like and his philosophy? I still probably have them as the dominant beings down in the South Bay. I still think Modern Day was still capable of doing that. But can they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a cathedral? Even if it is a cathedral that doesn't have all their guys there, it's still cathedral. They're probably stacked with players. So can they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in week one? We've seen it before. We've seen them right. be able to be capable of going to play against them. So it will be a very interesting game. I know Bo will be excited for this one. You know, it'll be a great one to have at Modern Day. I know they love to show out and for a big game like this too. And you know, it's not exactly the Holy Bowl, but it is. It has picked it's up some steam. It, it has yeah. picked up some steam in the past couple of years. So there definitely is a rivalry there. So it's kind of great having a rivalry right out the box which i mean i guess we have the biggest rivalry i don't know about the biggest in this city <laughs> but you know a really big rivalry out the box that has really been like the one for week one which is the battle of pearl street in la jolla with bishops taking on la jolla not necessarily a road game for bishops because that's where they play their games <laughs> yeah, anyways right. so it's it's almost like a family atmosphere because these are kids that grow up with each other you know they the families all know each other so it's like they go from sitting on the home side to now they're on the visitor <laughs> side bleachers so it's a fun atmosphere i love this battle of the pearl street but two really great teams mm -hmm. especially with la jolla coming off their loss to del norte in the championship game a lot of those guys are returning I understand they're not having deal and that's a big one, but they, they also have the younger the deal, deal. <laughs> and who's in, led the county in interceptions. You know, I know Carolina is still there running the ball. Jed Thomas is a great offensive tackle for them. You know, they, they have a still really solid team in, in La Jolla. And I think they have a, when you can do that and you put like a bitter taste into their mouths, I expect the same thing out of Lincoln this year, right? They have so many mm -hmm. guys returning and they lost in the championship game. When those guys are on a mission, you know, I think it's very tough to beat that. And at least week one, I'm not saying they're going to go undefeated, but I feel like week one, they come out the box ready to go. Now, Bishops, on the other hand, you have Cash Herrera, who is fresh off getting offers from Iowa and UCLA. And congrats to him on that. I know he had a couple Ivy League schools offers mm -hmm. before that, but he's a great quarterback. After getting to watch him, he's getting his number one wide receiver back in Ian Brown. You know, I, I think there's a lot of guys on that defense that can play really well. As, you know, I, I love watching the tape on Declan O'Donovan in, in the trenches. You know, I think... I think when you look at Bishops, I think they could pose a threat. I know we saw them beat Mount Miguel last year, and that was Mount Miguel's yeah. only loss. I think they pose a threat, but I do think that this La Jolla team has just a little bit more of a chip on their shoulder. We saw them beat them last year. I know it's different now with Hudson Smith at quarterback, but Hudson Smith, from everyone that I've talked to, whether it's a Super 7 quarterbacks camp or, you know, the left coast, left coast athletics, they all swear by this kid being the one who's going to take the big step is the kid at La Jolla Huddy. So every single person's like, watch out for him, watch out for him. So I'm, I'm excited to see him because I do think he has a lot of capable features to be a really good quarterback. And you putting him in a great offense to work in in La Jolla should be a lot of fun in this game. Yeah, he's stepping into a really good spot where if he's going to prove himself, he has all of the tools to be able to do it. And I think, what, like you said, kind of that family atmosphere, it's like the whole neighborhood's all in one place. It'll be a really fun and exciting game, and I can't wait to see who really steps up from those teams. Well, now we go out to the East County, which is your neck yeah, of the woods. My neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> we got Patrick Henry at Grossmont for the East County Game of the Week. You know, when you look at these Grossmont teams and Patrick Henry teams, what's kind of the one thing that stands out to you? That's tough. I think Grossmont, they had a great run last year, and I think they're just hoping to make it that much further to really show how strong of a team they believe they are at their core. But they're another team experiencing changes. You know, they had um, Hudson Herber leave and graduate their quarterback, but there's another Herber on the block, his brother Josh, their whole family of quarterbacks. Um, he transfers from Steele to Grossmont. However, another guy who can't play in week one. So it'll be interesting to see who starts. It likely could be um, Tommy Donovan. Uh, he has the greatest receiving crew that he could ask for in Noah Walker and Parker Vanderberg. So hopefully he won't be experiencing too many troubles and that they'll be able to just run that offense smoothly and, and kind of pick up where they left off last season after gaining a lot of momentum, um, which was a change from the Grossmont that we had seen maybe 
oh, even like two years ago, completely change. different looking programs. Just look at their win loss record. Honestly, you can see. And everything comes down to Anthony Lawrence. It just shows how mm -hmm. how much the right coach getting in there can change things. They go from being like everyone was shocked to see what Grossman felt to be to the point where like you know the kids were all like all right we might not even want to play you get yeah. Anthony Lawrence in there and with the same kids changes the program and you know I think the one thing with Herber him having to sit leaves a lot of questions for this game I think opens the door for Patrick Henry plenty mm -hmm. for them to get in there um I think once Herbert gets in there, this gross ball team is going to be a really, really good offense. He was someone that stood out alongside Hudson Smith as well when it came to guys who were like, wow, they look really, really good to make that jump this year. Uh, I, th I think he won the accuracy contest in the Super 7 quarterback okay. camp today, uh, this year, this offseason. He was great, and I, I expect him to have a really good year, the lefty. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't sleep on Patrick Henry. This Cody Capaletti no. kid, um, dual sport athlete in baseball and football, mm -hmm. and he put up some really good numbers last year. I expect him to come to the plate. You know, it's an East County matchup, so it'll be a little bit of a rivalry there as well. Mm -hmm. I think this will be a very good game, especially with the not knowing what the quarterback situation is. That can always open the door, especially at the high school level, for you know a possible upset. But I, I do think Grossmont can pull this one out. Like we talked about with Vanderberg and Walker, really good wide receivers. You know, I think they got overlooked a little bit last year um, because Bigley was there and Bigley had an insane mm -hmm. year. But uh, those guys are really, really good players. And uh, same thing, chip on the shoulder. We're talking, it's probably the third time we're talking about the teams that lost in the championship game now getting ready to go for the next year with some of the guys returning. I think Grossmont has that chip on their shoulder and I think they'll be ready to go. But it's a pretty good slate so far for yeah. week one. You know, sometimes we're in here like, oh man, <laughs> we're just like, they just they just happen to be out in east so that's why yeah. they're east county game of the week no it's not pretty across not the board it's pretty good games i think there's kind of that running theme of chip on their shoulder or something to prove from last year or proving themselves that they can withstand massive changes on their team we see that across the board and i think it's going to prove for a great week of football honestly oh, oh definitely so let's make a little prediction time for to look in the, in the future since it's before <laughs> week one before we see anybody play if you were to give Let's say a lock, someone that you're like, all right, guarantee, I, in my opinion, I think they'd be on the Silver Piskin uh, podium. And then someone who, you know, doesn't have to be a super far reach, but someone who is a good enough player where you're like, I right, wouldn't surprise me if they made it. Who would those two players be for you? I think the guy sort of on lock in my head who I feel it would be remiss not to mention is Achilles Smith Jr. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's just a dominant force. We all know that Oregon commit. Lincoln, always a fantastic program here in the section, and I'm really excited to see what he does this year um, as a senior, see how it all plays out. I know he's going to do big things, so I have very little doubts that he'll be making the yeah, podium. The, the be honestly, probably the best quarterback in town uh, with the best wide receiver options in town. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard not to pick Akili. I think if he does what he did last year with the team he's on and with the record they have, I think he'd absolutely be on there. Who would be your sleeper pick then? My sleeper pick, um, this guy is one of the fastest kids in the county. You know, I'm a little bit partial to the sport of track <laughs> and field. He's the D1 champ in both the one and 200. So he's got speed and athleticism. Um, he's also the number one wideout for San Marcos in a recent San Jose State commit. That's going to be Jason Knicks. I think he's someone to look out for who maybe isn't on everyone's radar, but I think a few weeks into the season, he's going to be. Yeah, I think I think Knicks playing for Crete. I know they got some couple other receivers there now with CJ Williams. I don't know exactly where CJ, they might have him as running back, but I know that they have Reese there as well. So I, you know, there's going to have a lot of weapons, which could, you know, make the numbers go down. But it seems like every single time Knicks is open, Crete's getting him the ball. And, you know, I think that he is his number one and he's a great playmaker, gets a lot of great touchdowns, yeah. usually ends up on play of the week at least once or twice a year. <laughs> you know, so I think Jace Knicks, I think it's a good call where it's tough with wide receiver because you never know, like, if it's a wide receiver making the podium, it's like, OK, it's like the Heisman. It's like, well, then why isn't his quarterback on there? Exactly. You know, so it's always tough with wide receiver, but I think that's a good shout to, to give it to him if he were to make it um, for my lock they are separated now <laughs> but I'm not going to separate them for one last time and that is Maxwell Turner from Granite Hills and Pablo Jackson from Helix you know going into the season that was probably the one thing we were dreading is like okay odds are Granite's going to be good again odds mm -hmm. are both those players are going to have the same exact <laughs> impact they're going to have last year which was massive how do we pick between the two of them when it comes to the silver pigskin spot um, you know, not that we wanted to see them separated, but it sure makes our lives a lot easier. Now that one's at Granite and one's at Helix, I expect them both 
to probably make it. I think they both can do it. You know, you never know with how the season goes, but they're both going to be massive, especially on Helix for Pablo with them being very young. They're going to want to lean on him a lot. Mm -hmm. And we know what type of runner he is. He's incredible. And with Max at Granite, they're going to want to lean on him a lot. The one thing I will look at is they worked off of each other. So, you know, Pablo would line up in the slot sometimes while Max was in the backfield. And then once Max got a little tired, they put Pablo back there for a couple plays or, or whatever. And they rotate. Mm -hmm. How are they going to handle the bulk of the carries? Because that's what I'm expecting for both of them is they're going to sure. be getting the ball all the time. What does that look like? You know, will they have to like kind of rotate out? Probably the running backs it happens to everybody, but I do think they, they are going to have some big years. So I'm not going to pick between the two of them um, <laughs> in honor of them being kind of the duo they, they have been yeah. in the last couple of years. So I think if there was a lock, I would say do not sleep on Pablo and do not sleep on Max. I think they both would probably make it. As far as my sleeper, he's returning home to University City. I would go Drayden Gardner. I think mm. him playing for Quentin Damara again at quarterback, we saw what that looked like last time. I think he can put up some really, really big numbers. You know, I obviously he could have done that at Lincoln too when his time was there. But I think that they're gonna have to lean on him a little bit. You know, Tay Lockett's there back as well. So I think Drayden Gardner would be a really good pick as far as a sleeper, because I think it fits the wide receiver kind of model of like, you, you know, obviously they're gonna to wanna to put the quarterback on there over it. <laughs> but I think Drayden can have that type of impact, especially on both sides of the ball. So I would say Drayden Gardner would probably be my pick when it came to like a, a really good player who could sneak their way onto the, the podium. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Yeah, I think those are great picks, especially in Drayden, that's a name you know, I haven't really heard since last season, but once you say it, I totally see how that is a great possibility. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting that yeah, point where it's like, it's it. all coming back now. <laughs> yeah. Now it's week one, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot about You're that like, guy. He's you on know. to watch. <laughs> what, what else are you kind of looking forward to now? Now that we are on the, month, on the Tuesday, going into the season, uh, you know, we're right here. What's the one thing that gets you excited to finally return back to football? I think it's just, it's one of the most anticipated time of the year especially you know everyone's back to school it's not always the most exciting but I know like when I was in high school and growing up for me what made going back to school better a hundred percent was football season and so I think even just for fans and families coaches I'm excited to get get the ball rolling I guess and get started on the field and watching some good games. Absolutely, you know, for me, it's the same. You know, it's like, all right, the anticipation, we've been thinking about PPR since PPR left. <laughs> so it's, you know, we're, it's all the preparation and all this going into it. But then once you get out there and, you know, the team previews are great because you're around the team and stuff. But then like, once you actually see the action, like these scrimmages these past weekend, and like you hear them tackling, you hear the sound of the tackle, mm -hmm. you see the plays being made, you get to see the coaches getting fired up, making the adjustments, just everything. Just from, from that to the band, and to the cheerleaders like the whole atmosphere Friday night is something that is one of the best things to watch in this county and I, I highly suggest anybody to go out on Friday night if you're not going out but Friday nights at a high school football game in this county are great they're great atmospheres especially when the game is great mm -hmm. and that's what I'm looking forward to the most is just getting back out there to the football aspect of things maybe that's a former football player in me <laughs> and just like I, I miss the little things like the you know the little things like the pass ball call when like the when it's not a when it's play action mm -hmm. you know I remember that being on the sideline and like that was like our duty you know so it's everybody involved it's not just the guys that are playing it's a little stuff like that that's like oh yeah this is where this is where it's supposed this is to be Friday night yeah it's Friday night <laughs> it's just, there's really nothing better than that yeah. and so that's what I'm looking forward to the most but you know that's where we're got for here today we obviously have no review of last week because there was no last week but uh, we will be back next week to review all the action from week one all the best stuff and then preview week two from Chase Zadoro and the new co-host Maddie Worley We'll see you guys next time. See you Friday.